Hello everybody and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. I'm Cybert and today I want to examine the full story of everyone's favorite extra planner elvish planeswalker, Nisa Ravain. Her origins were recently elaborated with the release of Magic Origins, so now is the perfect time to bring you her entire story. Nisa is an elf from the plane of Zendikar. Zendikar is a world lush with mana and natural life which has evolved unique cultures and creatures. As an elf, Nisa lived with the Doraga, a tribe of elves with simple lifestyles but very strict cultural laws. Her and her mother are living in this tribe as Nisa first experiences terrifying dreams of a coming darkness. The mother and daughter are the last two surviving animists on Zendikar, animists being powerful shamans who could communicate with the land itself. Due to Nisa's ancestry, the tribal leader of the Jiraga believed her dark dreams to be a prophecy of doom. He translated her dreams as Zendikar being angry with the young elf, and that the land would eventually destroy her. In order to protect his tribe, the leader was forced to exile Nisa and her mother from the Jiraga. Nisa's mother, Moreau, always told her that these visions were a gift, that Zendikar was walking and talking to her. But her mother never fully understood the extent of Nisa's dreams, how hopeless she felt as the dark knot of the world enveloped her, the choking loneliness from which she was plummeting. Zendikar was in pain, and Nisa knew that this pain would eventually kill her and all those she loved. Fearing that this darkness would attack those around her, Nisa decided to run away from her home and took to the thick forests of Zendikar. After a full night of running and covering her tracks with the little nature magic she learned, Nisa stopped for a moment to catch her breath. That's when she saw it. The beginning of her ominous dream. A shining light which moved as if it were alive headed right towards her. This stream of light was harmless, but it was from this stream that the darkness would eventually find her. Try as she might, Nisa could not escape this fluid light which always seemed to be a step ahead of her. Since she couldn't escape it, she decided to investigate it. The light then pounced on her, covering her entire body and making it impossible to move. Nisa believed this to be her end, but the light calmed her rather than frightened her. It was at this moment that Nisa connected with Zendikar itself. This light was the soul of the land. This light showed her more visions. It was the land telling her what she needed to do. It showed Nisa a vision of herself, standing up against the darkness. This darkness, the one from her dreams, it was the knot in the back of Zendikar, the source of all of its pain and fear. Nisa had to stop it. As she awoke from this trance, she discovered that she had in fact been followed by a member of her former tribe, by her friend, Mazik. He told her that he was worried, but didn't fear her powers, and, with seeing the light of Zendikar itself, Mazik now believes he must help her defeat the darkness. The light of Zendikar danced and played as if it were a young child. It was happy, loving, and carefree. It tugged at the two elves, in the hopes that they could help the world itself. Nisa and Mazik were more than willing to chase after this light, even as it dragged them through the marshes and swamps. While crossing the moors, Nisa and her friend were attacked by vampires. The life of Zendikar had no power to help defend them, but it did guide them in the quickest route out of the marsh. Nisa was able to traverse the logs and trees with ease and made it out, but Mazik wasn't so skilled or lucky. Upon noticing that her friend hadn't made it through, Nisa struggled with the decision to go back. Going back in certainly meant her own death, but she couldn't continue her journey or her ultimate goal knowing that she had left her friend behind to die. She rushed back into the marsh to find that Mazik had climbed a large tree and that the group of vampires had surrounded it. As the attackers noticed her as an easier meal, they charged. Nisa reacted quickly, hoping to summon Roots to act as a shield, but the land responded like she had never seen before. With her simple spell, a behemoth made of pure land and vegetation formed in front of her eyes. The elemental acted off Nisa's will and easily dispatched the group of vampires. Both Nisa and Mazik were stunned by her power, never before had they seen anything like it. Nisa was in more disbelief than Mazik, who said that this new power of hers was how she was going to save Zendikar. As they continued to travel, Nisa and her friend lost sight of the guiding light which was Zendikar's soul. This was troubling. Without the light, they would have no idea where to go. The earth then began to quake. It was a royal. She had heard of royals, giant serfs of living land which thrashed about wildly. It was just as terrifying as the stories had said. 
Nisa had lost her connection to the land as it was acting mad. Huge boulders were flung into the air, landing near their position. The shaking was becoming more intense, and the pair would eventually die if the land did not calm soon. Mazik pleaded with Nisa to bring Zendikar back to sanity, but Nisa couldn't find the connection. She dove as deep as she could into the land, and she eventually found the soul of Zendikar. It had changed, it was in a state of fear and pain. She tried everything she could to calm it, but nothing worked until she hummed an animus song which she had learned from her mother. It worked. The land calmed once more and again the light appeared to her as her guide. Finally, their journey had come to its conclusion. They had reached the mouth of Akum. The light and soul of Zendikar refused to go any further towards the dark knot which it feared. Mazik was also unable to join her for the pressure of the darkness caused him to become ill with blood pouring from his nose. Nisa was on her own, but not alone, and with that she pushed on towards the darkness that smothered her dreams and harmed her land. She found the exact spot from which she fought the darkness in her vision. She stood and unleashed the full power of Zendikar down upon the mountain. When the dust settled, she expected to see nothing but rubble, but the mountain stood strong as if nothing even struck it. The darkness poured out from the mountain, enveloping her, just as it did in her dreams. In the pressing darkness, she saw it. The monster. The being which was causing all the fear and pain in the land. The Aldrazi. With no power to move or fight back, Nisa accepted her fate. This darkness will kill her as it was foretold in her dreams. In that moment, Nisa let go and the darkness gave way to Sky. Nisa was confused. She was sent through the void and landed on solid ground once again. Had the darkness let her go? When she opened her eyes, the mountain was no longer there. The world had changed. She was no longer on the mountain of Akum, but a forest. She was no longer on Zendikar. She attempted to connect with this strange new land and shockingly, it responded. It called itself Lorwyn. This land was not like her home, where Zendikar was playful and innocent, Lorwyn was standoffish and somber. Yet one thing made these two worlds similar, they were both in pain. Nisa had another vision, this time of Lorwyn. It was a coming darkness, but not like the darkness of Zendikar. This darkness was a blanket which covered over the land, corrupting everything in its path. Under the surface, dark spiders were born, and with them came death. Nisa awoke surrounded by native elves, although they looked rather different from herself. They had horns and hooves. They talked about Nisa's otherworldly beauty as their leader appeared. She called herself Dwanin, and she was leading a hunting party to exterminate a blight from the forest. Nisa believed the elf was referring to the dark spider she saw from her dream, and she immediately offered her assistance. Dwenin agreed, and the group went out on the hunt. Nisa had an overwhelming feeling of joy. This is how it should be, a group going out together to save their world with action. The party found their prey and the elves attacked, but these weren't the blight Nisa had seen in her visions. These were little toad-like creatures called buggerts. Similar to goblins, they were just living things of the land and not the coming darkness she foresaw. Nisa attempted to stop this slaughter. After all, these creatures were innocent beings of the land and deserved to live just as they did. As Dwenin pulled out her bow and aimed it at Nisa, it came. The Great Aurora, Shadowmoor. This is what Nisa had seen, a darkness with a soul of its own taking over everything it touched. The creeping shadow made its way towards the elves, consuming all but Nisa who ran out of the way. This darkness talked to Nisa, begging her to stay with it in the shadow forever. This soul could teach her much about power, grant her the tools she would need to save her home, to save Zendikar. Nisa thought only of her home and realized that the power she gained from this darkness would not help her if she was forced to stay there forever. She didn't know how, but she had to escape this. She uttered her home world Zendikar and a rift opened in front of her. Escaping the darkness, Nisa returned to her home. From her origins, Nisa traveled the multiverse, learning what she could and gaining strength. She learned from various elf species from different worlds, taking in their spells and their culture. Eventually, Nisa would make her way back to the home she loved, but now things weren't as stable. Villages started to disappear, and Nisa already had an idea of what was its cause. The darkness which she had faced once before has finally been released on the Zendikar. Her own village would eventually fall to the broodlings of this great shadow known as the Aldrazi. Even Nisa herself would have died if it weren't for the aid of a vampire, this Soren Markov. 
this vampire who Nisa didn't trust, despite him saving her life, wanted to reach the mountain of Akum, the source, Nisa knew, of these terrible creatures. Their journey to the mountain was long and dangerous, resulting in the lives lost of many who traveled with them. I've already covered a lot of this story when I made my video on Soren Markov, so if you want more details, you can check out that video here or linked in the description below. At the end of it all, Nisa discovered the true intent of Soren. Soren was attempting to secure the prison which kept the Eldrazi bound to Zendikar, rather than destroy the beast entirely. This meant that Zendikar would continue to carry this pain and fear, while the Eldrazi slowly consumed her world from the inside out. Nisa could not bear this to happen, so when the party made it to the Hedrons which kept the monsters bound to the world, Nisa shattered it. Soren was stunned that Nisa would just free these beasts without fully understanding what that meant. With the Eldrazi freed, Soren washed his hands of Zendikar and of this troublesome elf, and planes walked away. Nisa believed that by freeing the Eldrazi, they would return to the Blind Eternity to feed on other worlds and leave Zendikar for good. She was wrong. The land was so lush with mana that one of the Eldrazi stayed to consume it. Nisa felt her whole life leave her. She was the cause of her own world's destruction. Feeling personally responsible, Nisa vowed to find Soren and bring him back to Zendikar so that he could either defeat the Eldrazi or imprison it once again. While traveling to find the Vampiric Planeswalker, Nisa would return to her home to check on the Jiraga tribe from time to time. After two years, the day Nisa feared most came to be, Ulamog and his broodlings finally attacked her tribe. They never stood a chance, even with Nisa by their side, they were utterly destroyed by the Eldrazi. Her grief manifested as a power which she had never realized was possible, she now completely controlled the land and the plains themselves. Nisa's true power had awoken, and she had become the World Waker. And with this new power, she would defend the multiverse from the Eldrazi which had taken so much from her. Her home was no longer the most important place in the multiverse to Nisa. The multiverse itself needed her protection, not just Zendikar. So, there you go guys, the full story of Nisa Ravain and where she stands as of right now. Obviously she'll have a huge role to play in the upcoming battle for Zendikar, but will her new world waker powers be enough to defeat Ulamog? I want to know what you guys think about Nisa Ravain, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, it goes a long way in supporting future content. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.